She was slender and wonderfully graceful, except that her movements were languid, very languid indeed. There was nothing in her appearance to indicate an invalid. Her complexion was rich and brilliant. Her features were small and beautifully formed. Her eyes large, dark and lustrous. Her hair was quite wonderful. I never saw her hair so magnificently thick and long when it was down about her shoulders. I have often placed my hands under it. I laughed with wonder at the weight. It was exquisitely fine and soft, and in color a rich, very dark brown, with something of gold. I love to let it down, tumbling with its own weight as in her room she lay back in her chair talking in her sweet low voice. I used to fold and braid it and spread it out and play with it. Heavens, if I had but known all. She used to place her pretty arms about my neck, draw me to her and laying her cheek to mine, murmur with her lips near my ear. Dearest, your little heart is wounded. Think me not cruel, because I obey the irresistible law of my strength and weakness. If your dear heart is wounded, my wild heart bleeds with yours. In the rapture of my enormous humiliation, I live in your warm life. She, I don't trouble my head about peasants. I don't know who she is, answered Carmilla, with a flash from her fine eyes. She is the poor girl who fancied she saw a ghost a fortnight ago and has been dying ever since, till yesterday, when she expired. Tell me nothing about ghosts. I shan't sleep tonight if you do. I hope there's no plague or fever coming. All this looks very like it, I continued. The swineherd's young wife died only a week ago, and she thought something seized her by the throat as she lay in her bed and nearly strangled her. Papa says such horrible fancies to accompany some forms of fever. She was quite well the day before. She sang afterwards and died before a week. Well, her funeral is over, I hope, and her hymn sung. And our ears shall be tortured with that discord and jargon. It has made me nervous. Sit down here beside me, sit close, hold my hand. Press it, press it hard, hard, harder. All of this, said my father, is strictly referable to natural causes. These poor people infect one another with their superstitions and so repeat in imagination the images of terror that have infested their neighbors. But that very circumstance frightens one horribly, said Carmilla. How is so? inquired my father. I'm so afraid of fancying I see such things. I think it would be as bad as reality. We are in God's hands. Nothing can happen without his permission, and all will end well for those who love him. He is our faithful creator. He has made us all and will take care of us. 
creator, nature, said the young lady in answer to my gentle father. And this disease that invades the country is natural nature. All things proceed from nature, don't they? All things in the heaven, in the earth, and under the earth act and live as nature ordains. I think so. Later in the day, the doctor came and was closeted with Papa for some time. He was a skillful man of 60 and upwards. He wore powder and shaved his pale face as though he was a pumpkin. He and Papa emerged from the room together and heard Papa laugh and say as they came out, well, I do wonder at a wise man like you, what do you say to hippogriffs and dragons? The doctor was smiling and made answer, shaking his head. Nevertheless, life and death are mysterious states, and we know little of the resources of either. The artist now produced it with evident pride. It was quite beautiful. It was startling. It seemed to live. It was the effigy of Carmilla. Carmilla, dear, he is an absolute miracle. Here you are, living, smiling, ready to speak. In this picture, isn't it beautiful, Papa? And see, even the little mole on her throat. My father laughed and said, oh, certainly, it is a wonderful likeness. But he looked away and to my surprise seemed but little struck by it and went on talking to the picture cleaner who was also something of an artist and discoursed with intelligence about the portraits or other works which his art had just brought into light and colour. While I was more and more lost in wonder, the more I looked at the picture. Will you let me hang this picture in my room, Papa? I asked. The disappearance of Carmilla was followed by the discontinuance of my nightly sufferings. You have heard no doubt of the appalling superstition that prevails in Upper and Lower Styria, in Moravia, Silesia, in Turkish Serbia, in Poland, even in Russia. The superstition, so we must call it, of the vampire. If human testimony, taken with every care and solemnity, judicially, before commissions innumerably, each consisting of many members, all chosen for integrity and intelligence and constituting reports more voluminous perhaps than exist upon any other class of cases is worth anything it is difficult to deny or even to doubt the existence of such a phenomenon as the vampire. For my part, I have heard no theory by which to explain what I myself have witnessed and experienced, other than that supplied by the ancient and well-attested belief of the country. The next day, the former proceedings took place in the chapel of Karnstein. The grave of the Countess Mercalla was opened and the general and my father recognized each his perfidious and beautiful guest in the face now disclosed to view. 
Among other things, he concluded that suspicion of empirism would probably fall sooner or later upon the dead countess who in life had been his idol. He conceived a horror, be she what she might, of her remains being profaned by the outrage of a posthumous execution. He has left a curious paper to prove that the vampire on its expulsion from its amphibious existence is projected into a far more horrible life and he resolved to save his once beloved Mirkala from this. He adopted the stratagem of a journey here, a pretended removal of her remains and a real obliteration of her monument. When age had stolen upon him and from the veil of years he looked back on the scenes he was leaving, he considered in a different spirit what he had done. And horror took possession of him. He made the tracings and notes which have guided me to the very spot and drew up a confession of the deception that he had practiced. If he had intended any further action in this matter, death prevented him, and the hand of a remote descendant has too late for many directed the pursuit of the lair of the beast. <laughs>